all the things which we have said uh, in our previous modules, what is intonation, what is its relationship with gender, and uh, what factors lie behind gender differences. All these things were results of different studies conducted by different researchers over a period of time. They were discussed in our resource that uh, we have selected for the study of these, these modules relating to intonation and gender. In this module, what we are going to do is we will put together all these observations of different studies and we try to make a theory of sex differences with reference to intonation. When we say theory, theory means a kind of explanation that we can use for prediction. So through these theoretical assumptions, you can predict whether this intonation difference is because of culture, because of physiology, because of naturalness, etc. This is the main purpose of this module. First, we're going back to uh, history and then uh, coming to the theory. The civil rights movement and feminist struggle of 1960s in the US. I have already mentioned this uh, history briefly in uh, some previous module as well. These two movements, civil rights movements of blacks and feminist movement for the rights of women, they, because their goal was common, they were raising voice for civil rights. So they together invited attention to study role of language in people's lives. Because language is taken for granted. It is something that we use unthinkingly, unconsciously. Uh, so we never think that it is transforming our life. It has central role in our life. So the first time in the history of the U.S., it, it, it was uh, it, it taken as something serious that we should study how language affects our lives. These activists observed that language serves the status quo and the powerful. So it is the central part that language plays to maintain the status quo, the social system as it exists, it maintains it, reinforces it, strengthens it. And it is this strengthening of uh, the current uh, conditions, social conditions, it is in benefit of the powerful. And uh, by powerful, we also mean men. If we know how language is used by subordinated segments of society, subordinated segments of society, those people who are thought to be underprivileged, belonging to lower classes of society, lower segments of society, downtrodden, grassroots level people. So, the language when used by these people and we understand the language they use. So, this knowledge of understanding the use of language will help us to plan some strategy, to plan some research, etc., to counter the status quo, to face the status quo, to make efforts for social transformation. This is possible if the study of ideal speech 
by ideal speaker in ideal community is set aside because 1960s was the time when Noam Chomsky was most prominent and rather dominant on the linguistic scene of America. He assumed that in the study of linguistics, our major concern is with ideal speaker who lives in ideal community and who speaks an ideal language. There is no variation, there is no performance errors, etc. etc. This is a kind of perfect system. Okay. But if we confine to this kind of assumed community and assumed speaker and assumed language use, we cannot understand what actually language does in society with our life. So we have to take side from Chomsky's point of view. Linguistics should redirect its focus on the actual speaker, actual use of language in diverse society. And this task was taken up by sociolinguists like Delheims, etc. We have already mentioned Delheims. He too was American and anthropological linguist. The beginning can be made. The beginning of this study, this sociolinguistic study of language can be made from the study of speech styles of the powerless and the powerful. That study would bring to light what is going on and where language is working and in whose interest it is working. If language is examined with reference to sex differences, instead of studying it with reference to race and other factor, ethnicity, etc., if we just focus on gender, though this is very difficult to isolate gender from these factors, we have um, mentioned it many times, but for the moment, for our understanding, we, we examine language with reference to sex differences. So here, with this focus alone, sociolinguistics, its methodology, its theories alone are not enough. Because this situation is so complex, it involves such a complex process and factors and dimensions that we need help from a wide range of disciplines, from psychology, from anthropology, from uh, sociology, and uh, from gender studies, etc. By drawing upon all these disciplines, we can suggest a theory of relation between language and gender. As a model of such collaborative approach, collaborative that draws upon different, uh, different disciplines to study different dimensions of the issue, the relationship between language and gender. A theory of gender and intonation is proposed. And this theory, its outline, its main points, salient points are given here. Number one, in oral communication, pitch patterns are cues of speaker sex. We have proved this point. Number two, every culture associates stereotypes with intonations of men and women. This too has been discussed. But these stereotypes are not universal. This is the point. And when we discuss this point, we also mention there that the intonation patterns, their choice varies from culture to culture, from society to society. This is what we mean. This is not universal. What is male intonation in one culture? 
that can be regarded effeminate in another culture effeminate like women the speech style that is similar to women's speech style this is called effeminate speech style the third point of this theory is the choice of intonation is not bound by stereotyped patterns it may be personal choice if you remember we have discussed this point at individual speaker level and at societal level so sometimes the speaker's own personal choice determines that this would be the appropriate intonation pattern to achieve this communicative purpose in this communicative context it depends how the speaker wants to present himself or herself in a community of practice we are all part of some community of practice we are part of some office we are part of some workplace we are part of some university all these are communities of practice society is organized into communities of practice at micro level and from there onwards we go upward towards macro structures of society this is how society is structured okay so how a in, how an individual speaker presents himself or herself in a community of practice this is a personal choice this personal choice can decide which intonation pattern would be used a woman working with male colleagues for example may want to de-emphasize the sex she doesn't want to show herself as female de-emphasize she decreases importance of her female self she wants to be part of that male group so she can adopt male speech style male intonation pattern we conclude from with these three points of this theory that sex differences and language is a complex phenomenon and to understand this phenomenon we need help from different disciplines so that we may form some theory